Okay, so now we understand the difference between systolic and diastolic dysfunction. Let us now start with the left ventricular failure. So first of all, what is the pathogenesis of the left ventricular failure? Reduced contractility. We are talking about the systolic dysfunction first. Reduced contractility. Okay, so let us start with the uh, systolic dysfunction. So let us say here is our heart. This is the left atrium. This is left ventricle. This is right ventricle, right atrium. And the circulation is this that this is the left ventricle, blood comes in here, from here it goes to aorta. Keep an eye on a couple of valves over here. This is the atrioventricular valve on the left side, that is the mitral valve or bicuspid valve, right? Mitral or bicuspid valve. This is aortic valve. I'll write it here aortic valve is here. Then on the right side of course pulmonary valve and the and the tricuspid valve, but we are not interested on the right side of the heart at this time. Aorta then takes the blood, it sends the blood over, over to the head and neck area, it then sends the blood out to the, uh, to the rest of the body as well. Then the blood comes back in the right atrium from there to the right ventricle, from there it goes to the lungs. And from the lungs, this is important, from the right atrium, the blood goes to the lungs. These are lungs. And then from the lungs, oxygenated blood comes back to the left atrium. Why is this important? This part is important because when this heart is going to fail, it's going to create a back pressure that would cause accumulation of fluid in the lungs. And that is the majority of the clinical symptoms that you would hear from the patients. So that is why this is important to understand. So now let's see. What happens is blood pours in during the diastole, it fills, this is the papillary muscle, this is another papillary muscle holding on to the valves. Why did I make them? It is important to understand because their dysfunction will also be important. So the blood is filled. Then comes the systole. The blood now is going to be ejected. However, let us say that this heart unfortunately developed this ventricle, left ventricle developed an ischemic problem. Why did we develop an ischemic problem? Maybe the person had an IH, coronary heart disease or maybe ischemic heart disease was because of long standing uh, hypertension again causing the coronary heart disease or there was diabetes mellitus or there was atherosclerosis high uh, cholesterol or the patient has, it is age related and with the progressive age, the arteries start becoming stiffened, stiff. So the end result is that there is a ischemic heart disease. When this, this damaged heart, when this injured heart is trying to systole now, trying to contract now, it will not be able to generate enough force to move the blood or enough blood out in the aorta and to the body. That is the basic problem, that is a systolic dysfunction. Now, what things can cause this? What is, what is the etiology? As I said, ischemic heart disease, post myocardial infarction. So, myocardial infarction occurred. After that, that part of the muscle has become scarred and weak and it bulges out and it will not contribute in the contraction mechanism. And due to that, the systole has become less efficient. Then what else can be there? Uh, fibrosis of the heart. So if there is um, damage to the heart by viral uh, reasons or by myopathies and then there is fibrosis, the fibrosis would also cause the heart to be damaged. Dilated cardiac myopathies, most of those are idiopathic, some of those are congenital, others can be because of the chronic alcohol use or wet beriberi or viral like Coxsackie vi viruses. Uh, Chagas disease, doxyrubicin medicine, all of those can actually cause dilated cardiomyopathy. In the dilated cardiomyopathy, the heart has become so much dilated and so large that it cannot go into a systole properly. So imagine it's a big bucket with a small amount of vo volume of blood in it and you try to squeeze the bucket. 
So if you don't squeeze it all the way, the blood is not going to come up. So all of these are the problems with the systole. Now as the systole progresses, systolic dysfunction progresses, what will happen? Blood will start pooling. I'm going to make blue colored blood here. What is this blue colored blood? It's not deoxygenated. It is that extra blood that could not be ejected. So ejection fraction has reduced, cardiac output has reduced, contractility is reduced. That extra blood is now pooling in the, in the ventricle. That blood pooling in the ventricle will mean then slowly blood would start pooling in the atria. Uh, 